sorry. We'll, we'll reconvene into open session. Uh, should I read the closed session title or do I just, are we good with that? You don't, you don't need to. We're just reconvening with no action taken from closed. Right. Margaret, would you lead us in the pledge? Oh, when we get there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'm here now. We'll go ahead and proceed to the call to order and roll call, please. Councilmember Barnes? Here. Councilmember Mattini? Here. Councilmember Parlett? Here. Councilmember Spur? Present. And Mayor Turner? Here. Thank you. Margaret, would you please leave? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ready? Begin. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And we'll move on to acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, the consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda is a group of items that are not anticipated to cause controversy or require discussion. Tonight's are the waiving of the reading except by title of any ordinances under consideration at this meeting to approve the minutes of the City Council regular meeting of January 16th, 2018, approve the warrant registers of January 23rd, 2018, approve application 2018-003 with staff recommendations, for Cinco de Mayo event to be held in Library Park on May 6, 2018. Authorize the city manager to sign contract change orders number eight and nine, as well as sign and file the notice of completion with Granite Construction Company on the Lakeshore Boulevard ER project, ER 4403-003. Approve the resolution accepting exhibit 13-A stating the Lakeshore Boulevard Roadway Repair Project has no acquisition or of right-of-way associated with it, and receive and file draft minutes of the January 17, 2018 Measure Z Advisory Committee. Are there any items that Council wishes to pull from this agenda? <coughs> yes. Are there any items to which the public would like to speak? Seeing none? Madam Mayor, I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to public presentations and requests. Citizen input. Do we have any requests for citizens input? No. Okay. Then we will move on to a very important part of this meeting, a proclamation. The presentation of a proclamation honoring Harold Taylor's 14 years of service on the Lakeport Planning Commission. Mr. Taylor, Commissioner Taylor would please join me in the front. This is a proclamation recognizing Harold Taylor and honoring him for 14 years of outstanding service to the city of Lakeport. Whereas Harold Taylor has served as Planning Commissioner from January 8, 2003 through December 13, 2017, and whereas Harold served as Chairman of the Planning Commission in the terms of 2004-2005, 2009-2010, 2011-2012, and 2017, and whereas Harold has conscientiously executed the duties associated with his position. And whereas, during his tenure on the Planning Commission, Harold was instrumental in the updating, review, and implementation of the 2009 General Plan Update, the 2009 and 2014 Housing Element Updates, and adoption of the Lakeport Lakefront Revitalization Plan in 2017. And whereas, Harold's knowledge of construction development practices provided invaluable insight and benefit to the decision-making process of the Planning Commission, most specifically in regards to the 2010 Martin Street Senior Apartments and 2017 Martin Street Multifamily Apartment Projects, which have and continue to provide greater affordable housing opportunities to the community. 
and whereas City Council, staff, and fellow colleagues on the Planning Commission wish to express their appreciation to Harold for his dedication and efforts and let him know that he will be greatly missed. Now therefore, be it resolved that the City of Lakeport hereby recognizes Harold Taylor for his outstanding service to the City of Lakeport. <laughs> Thank the uh, city council. You've been behind all our projects and helped us through most of them. And uh, all the city staff, We've got a great staff. Our uh, new planning commission, I think we're going to have a great planning commission. I'm going to miss it. I've really enjoyed it. I really want to see our lakefront revitalization plan go through the rest of the way. And uh, I'm going to keep track of what's going on around here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Harold. Julie, are you happy you get him back? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we will move to our next item on the agenda under council business. Appoint Kip Nor to the Planning Commission to a term effective immediately, with the term expiring December 31st, 2018. So, Madam Mayor, members of the Council, um, as you may recall, the Council um, appointed an ad hoc committee to select um, uh, potential candidates for the uh, openings in the city's various committees and commissions. Um, Kip Knorr was the only applicant for the Planning Commission. The ad hoc committee uh, interviewed Mr. Knorr and is recommending him for placement on the Planning Commission. Thank you. Does the council have any questions? <coughs> is there any public input on this item? If not, we'll bring it back to the council for consideration. Madam Mayor, I move to appoint Kip Nord to the Planning Commission to a term effective immediately and expiring December 31st, 2018. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I just want to add that George and I did the interviews and Kip has great background. I think he's going to be a great addition. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <coughs> <laughs> Did you want me to do that announcement now? Oh, yeah, thank you. Good mind. Great. While we're on the subject of commissions and committees, and we just recognized Harold for all the, the years that he's given of his self, of himself in, to our, our whole community through his service on planning commission, uh, we've, we've had some ongoing discussions just in City Hall about the importance of everyone who gives of their time to serve on our, our committees and our commissions and how valuable they are. And in light of that, we are going to uh, start our meeting early next time. I forget the particular date. But about 5.15, we're going to hold a little reception uh, prior to our city council meeting so that we can we can formally extend uh, gratitude to, to every member who's given so much. Kelly, would you please fill us in on the details? Y yes, we will, and we will send out an invitation to a number of commission and committee members, but um, we're actually planning to hold that at the March 6th city council meeting, the night of that, so that it'll be it's about a month out. So there's plenty of time to get everyone here, and um, we'll just have a little reception before the council meeting and honor some outgoing folks and um, just hopefully get a chance to meet everyone and shake their hand if you haven't done that in a while. So that there'll be more coming out on that. Thank you very much. Next item. We'll continue with the appointments. Uh, appoint three members, Pamela Harpster, Dan Peterson, and Andy Lucas to the Lakeport Economic Development Committee effective immediately with terms expiring December 31st, 2019. Kelly? 
So like the Planning Commission, um, the Ad Hoc uh, Selection Committee met with the candidates. There were four candidates. One of the candidates was out of the country and unable to um, attend the interviews. So the, um, but the three remaining uh, candidates were interviewed and the selection committee opted to uh, recommend them for appointment by the council. And I think they will be reaching out also to that fourth candidate to bring that person in. Um, in invite that person to meetings and get them acclimated to what LEADAC is all about. Um, and LEADAC, just for the sake of the public, is our um, Lakeport Economic Development Committee um, that meets to develop programs and strategies for economic development within the city. That's it. Thank you. Anyone from the council have questions or comments? Anyone from the public here to address this item? Suzanne Lyons. I just had a question because I noticed that the um, the applicants for all the other commissions and committees seems to have been approved, but there were two or three applicants for the uh, Parks and Rec Commission who never heard anything. Uh, I believe Parks and Rec is our next agenda item. Well, yeah, but you did have people who did apply for those slots. I mean, did you not get? I think that's on hold because of the next item. So we we're going to look at the ordinance before we move forward. Right. With that. Well, it probably would have been really polite to tell the people that applied that what was going, what was going on. on. That's yeah. a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else from the public? If not, we'll bring this back to council for a motion. I'll make a motion to appoint three members, Pamela Harpster, Dan Peterson, and Andy Lucas to Lakeport Economic Development Committee effective immediately with terms expiring December 31st, 2019. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next item. This is regarding Parks and Recreation. <coughs> Introduce an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Lakeport, amending Chapter 2.20 of Title II of the Lakeport Municipal Code regarding the Park and Recreation Commission, and set a public hearing for February 20th, 2018. Kelly. Madam Mayor, members of the Council. Um, uh, like Suzanne mentioned, there was a recruitment for Park and Rec. Um, members uh, to fill vacancies and um, during that recruitment we became aware of members of the public that were interested in membership but prevented either because of the time of the meeting or because of the commitment level and um, currently the the park and rec committee um, has set once a month meetings and so we started talking about um, you know, the frequency of the meetings and the time of day and that type of thing. And also about perhaps, you know, just kind of looking at the ordinance and seeing if it still makes sense. Um, yeah, I think this ordinance was established in 1984. So it's good once in a while to look at these and make them consistent with each other, the various ordinances we have for our different committees. Um, so on this one, um, we took a look at it and we thought that we that staff would make a recommendation to the council that the council might want to consider opening this park and rec committee to folks that live um, outside of Lakeport, like one membership. We have that on other other committees, um, and the thought behind that being that a lot of folks call Lakeport their home, but they're not within the city boundaries. They use the parks all the time. There's a lot of interest there. So that's one suggested change that we're making to the ordinance. And the other with um, regard to frequency of meetings, um, we are suggesting quarterly meetings. Um, we're, the thought behind that is that the quarterly meetings get scheduled. They're not it's 
easier to manage for staff. Um, staff is, especially right now with the park being destroyed by the floods, um, you know, they're working on the priorities of the council as best they can, but sometimes once a month meetings can become a little onerous. Um, unless they're like have to, have to happen, then then that's that's what they need to do. But um, they were thinking that quarterly would cause less frustration on the side of the commission and on the side of staff because a lot oftentimes currently they're getting canceled and rescheduled. So um, so that that was the thought behind that was that four might be a little bit more reasonable. Um, and outside of that, so, and I really do apologize for not, you know, making any contact with the current applicants on what was going on on this. I, I thought there was communication going on on that, but I, I apologize. I should have made sure that there was communication going out on that. Um, but, so, I, I think the thought behind this would be to look at the ordinance, offer the opportunity for anybody to apply if it does change and um, and then bring back all of the applicants to the ad hoc selection committee. So I, I think that's it. Any questions? Questions or comments from council? Yeah. Let's open that up for public input. Is there anyone who cares to speak on this item? Yes. Nancy. Hi. Nancy Rizika. I was um, one of the original members of the Park and Recreation Commission in 1985. Uh, we um, needed to meet monthly and I think uh, the Park and Recreation Commission needs to continue to do that. I, I'm getting the feeling, although I don't live in the city uh, limits anymore, I'm still very interested, for example, the development of Westside Park. It isn't all about the lakefront. We have to continue to uh, be concerned about the entire circle. And the Park and Recreation Commission was, um, the intent was to give input to council. And I feel, I get the feeling currently that um, unless you have a monthly meeting, you're not going to get that. And quarterly, uh, what's going to happen? Um, staff's going to come to the meeting and tell the Park and Recreation Commission what they've been doing, and um, no creative ideas will come uh, before that group. For example, tonight in your closed session, you had an item that really disturbed me about negotiating uh, with schools about the property. I, I don't know what the background is that is, but Roy Parmentier was one of the original members of Park and Recreation, and we had a missing link down here opposite um, Park Place, and over, maybe it was a 75 cent cup of coffee at the time, we negotiated, uh, negotiated with the owner of that uh, to make an affordable purchase for the city of Lakeport. Um, and uh, his wife had passed away, and uh, he had a new wife, and the new wife didn't really want uh, to build a home in the middle of our park. So um, with an agreement in place with the city over uh, a period of financing, for some reason, I think it was five to eight years. I don't remember back that far. It's been 32 years. Um, they were able to build a lovely new home out on Lake Short Boulevard and uh, open up our lakefront all the way to Continuation High. So I want to mention that I, I want to see us, the city, I'm a taxpayer here, I don't live in the city limits, but I want to see um, the council and staff pay more attention to committees because a lot of ideas can come from those. So. Let's not change this. I think there's a lot of work to be done. You might have a lakefront plan in place. It's the third one I know of. I happen to like the first one that had an event center built out on over the water where you could marry your daughter or have a mini convention. And there's been at least three, and we've spent a lot of money on plans. But how much 
public input um, has really gone into it. It seems like we spend a lot of money paying for consultants when lay people with different expertise could um, save us um, a lot of money on consultants, I think. A lot of volunteer time. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Suzanne Lyons. I'm a member of the um, Parks and Rec Commission. I've been for several years. When I was on the city council, I was the city council representative that went to the meetings. We haven't had a city council representative at the meetings for a number of years now. Um, I think that's really too bad because there's a lot of things that we could tell you that you don't know. And there's a lot of things that you could tell us that we don't know, but the conversation doesn't go on. And I think that that's a problem. Um, one of the things that we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take some direction from you and we're supposed to bring ideas to you. If we don't talk to you, I don't know how you think that's supposed to happen. But uh, one of my questions is how many applicants did you have this year for this commission? Um, four? Three? Three. 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 You had three and you had three openings, which means that you had enough people. No, we had four. Okay, you had four and you had three openings. So you have enough people already who are interested in being on the commission. Um, the members who have made the commitment, and been, some of them have been on here for at least eight years, um, weren't informed that you were doing this. I, I'm sorry, that's just rude. Um, our meeting was canceled. If the meeting had been held, we probably would have known that this was going on, but this was something that uh, we didn't even know about. It just somebody happened to alert me that this was in the paperwork. Your staff report says that other committees have out-of-city members, but this isn't a committee, it's a commission. Do you have other commissions that have out-of-city members? Planning Commission. Planning Commission? Has an out-of-city? Correct. Okay. Um, your report says that the parks are enjoyed by non-residents, and that's true, but the financial responsibility is borne by Lakeport, not by the people who enjoy it. So if we're talking about things like paying the bills, I think that it's the people that pay the bills that ought to be the people that make the decision on which bills get paid and what we do. Um, the conversation that was had was never mentioned to any of us who were on the, uh, who were sitting commissioners. So we don't know who had the conversation, who is interested in being in being on this committee. No one ever came to a committee ma meeting and said, I don't live in, in this town, but I'd like to be on this commission. I've been going for eight years, never heard a person ever say that to us. Um, when people say they don't want to commit to more than four meetings, then they don't want to be on the commission. The people who are already sitting on it and who've applied to sit on it further are there all the time. I don't think, I don't remember them ever canceling a meeting because we didn't have enough people. Uh, if you don't want the work, then don't be on the committee. Uh, the issue about the quarterly meetings, that was brought up last year in here, and it was also brought up in the commission, and both times it was voted down. So I don't know why we're biting this apple again. Um, there's lots going on right now with the parks, and I think it's really important for the citizens who live in this town and who foot the bill to, to be able to have some sort of input and also be aware so that we can tell other citizens in the town of what's going on. And as long as I've been on this commission, I haven't seen people come in and go, uh, and, and come to the commission and say much of anything. I can only remember one person who ever came other than Westside Park, who comes in and does, uh, brings things that are park issues. But a single person coming in, I've only seen one, and that was somebody that I told that they should come to the meeting. So I, I don't know why you're going to change the ordinance, and if you were planning on changing the ordinance, I think that you should have talked to the people who are involved. Thank you, Suzanne. Any other member of the public like to address this item? Is there any back for council of questions? Oh, <coughs> oh sorry. 
I think, uh, hi, thank you, Glenn, Madam Mayor, our new mayor and council members. I'm um, Suzanne Russell, uh, one of the Parks and Rec Commission commissioners. Um, I'm not quite sure where this has come from, and we've had, and did some research, and we've had, in the last 16 months, we've had exactly six meetings. One was canceled due to illness, and the rest of them have been canceled by the staff for whatever reasons. There's been plenty going on. But um, hopefully we don't have any more fires or floods, and we can get on with the business of, of handling the city. I think the Parks and Rec Commission should be monthly. We can barely get anything through monthly, um, let alone, I mean, the idea of quarterly to me is just absolutely absurd, especially with the caveat of that quarterly meeting could be canceled at any moment by staff. So I, I took a little private poll. I asked our newest member, Kip, who's also joined the Planning Commission, if he objects to monthly meetings, and he said, absolutely not. And no one, no one of the other commissioners feel the same way. We all feel the same way. We all are committed. We all want to serve our town. And we can't do it quarterly, as far as I'm concerned. That's it, thanks. Thank you, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. <coughs> hey, Ann. My, my name is Ann Blue, and um, I've been on the committee on the uh, Park and Rec Commission for since 2011. So, you know, it's been a few. Do I have that right? That's right. <laughs> since 2011, and uh, I'm no, I'm not a commissioner right now because my term expired on December the 31st. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But at any rate, we've been working on trying to get a, a walking path in downtown Lakeport now since 2014. And for a number of reasons, it's been held up. So I don't think that having quarterly meetings is a very good idea. Uh, as, um, as Suzanne mentioned, both Suzanne's, we really, even when we had the monthly meetings, we barely met more than six times a year. And that's pretty consistent. So I would prefer not to have anything other than, I mean, if it's a, something that's scheduled or something that comes up and it has to be canceled, we accept that, but to say we're having four meetings a year, I just don't believe that's adequate. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually much easier to schedule two extra special meetings than it is to cancel six meetings, right? Because the amount of time that goes into just scheduling the meeting and, and um, setting it is, does that get noticed in the paper or what is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's noticing requirements. So not in the paper. There yes it's in the paper. Is it in the paper? I've never seen it. So the notice there are noticing requirements um, for any scheduled meeting. So if you have a regular scheduled meeting, it's a seventy two hour advance notice. Um, and then you know, you've got then if you're canceling you've got to send out a notice that you're canceling and then you've got to reschedule so then you'd have to repost a whole, another new meeting. So if we would have had quarterly meetings with two special meetings, it would have saved a ton of time and money it would than save some time. scheduling the monthly meetings. I think staff minds having special meetings when there's a certain project they're working on, if they have to have an extra meeting. Right. Um, it's just that my department heads are, it's, are scheduled pretty thinly. There's so many other priorities that we're also working on for the council that um, if the meetings are quarterly and then we could, add, if there is a project, you know, right now there's a, there's a bid for the playground that we need to get back to the recreation committee and so we could schedule. If it's not 
going to be a meeting soon. We could schedule an extra meeting to get that done. Anything that's going on as a project. It's just that my the hours of my department heads that are attending these meetings, if instead instead of having to constantly cancel the meetings, it would be much easier to add a meeting if we needed to. So to add a meeting. Do you, do you either of you know the last time that we got a report at City Council from Parks and Rec? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing too. It would be good to have. I can't really remember, and I mean, I think part of this is the fact that, may, you know, like Suzanne said, some of this isn't working, and so may, it's time to kind of look at the ordinance and make the, you know, this work better so that we have a plan for communication between council and the committee. And um, and one other thing to point out that was that the League of California Cities made the recommendation that the council should not be attending its own committees. Um, because that could be a conflict later that and upon that recommendation is when we pulled it's not like we're not just showing up skipping the meeting we, we made a conscious decision to um, pull back from that for that reason um, I just thought I'd point those things out I do remember recently that uh, uh, Suzanne and Ann and Suzanne and been really good about updating council when there's when there's news like with that walking path and yes. medallions and things like that so so that is a one way that we have been getting timely uh, communications from that committee um, but I do also wanted to, I wanted to hear just a little bit more about how one goes around about scheduling a special meeting can you cover that like so <clears throat> um, I'm not the secretary for that <clears throat> for that committee but um, Basically, either at a meeting or via email, they would figure out a date, and then there's a 24-hour notice um, requirement. So it's a little bit easier to get that done. Okay. But, but that does the 24-hour thing still need to be posted in the paper? Or? Yeah, the posting that part of it's all the same. Again? Of course, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Suzanne Nelson, Parks and Rec Commission. Um, if we, if you deign to give us four meetings a year, I don't think it's necessary to schedule any special meetings because we won't know what's happening anyway. I really vehemently oppose. Uh, why, why, would, why wouldn't you know? It wouldn't, you would be cut off from the information. Well, I think, Is that what you're, I think we're cut off from the information now if we're getting six meetings out of 16 months and getting ca meetings canceled constantly by staff. <laughs> and, and the last one that was canceled, I think, I think my email, I, I don't know, I think it may have been one day, I got a, mo a memo an email in the morning giving me the agenda and then later on in the day it was canceled. Um, you know, I just I just think that it is an important function and it doesn't take that long for the meetings. It's an hour and a half perhaps. Uh, we value Doug's input and we value Ron's input when he comes. Anybody that has information pertaining to the parks we're interested in mm -hmm. and we'd like to hear it. And I don't think quarterly, I think it's absurd, absolutely ridiculous. We barely know what's going on now, especially with the amount of canceled meetings. And I think that it's important for the community to have some sort of accountability. And that's part of what Parks and Rec does, <coughs> part of all of our commissions do. It, it gives accountability uh, to the people. Thank you, Suzanne. Do you have um, do you have in, in recent memory over these last few meetings uh, projects that were ongoing that really required a timely meeting that were were affected negatively because of the cancellation? Well, like Anne said, we've been she's been working on this on this path since uh, 2014, and um, someone in the staff has told me that dealing with some of the stuff, you know, the ADA, all the regulations, et cetera, et cetera, buying equipment, um, 
it just, I mean, we can't even get a bench without going through about 15 hoops. And it's absolutely, you know, I'm, for me, I just go out and do it and get it done. Uh, but I've learned that the city has requirements and restrictions of the yin yang. And it's like it takes forever to get even a bench or a pathway. I mean, these women have been working on this thing for years and uh, would like to see its completion sometime in our lifetime. And we can't do things like that quarterly. And you're attributing that to a lack of monthly meetings? Well, that's a, a real big contributor. Okay. We have the Brown Act. We're not supposed to talk to each other. So if we can't do that, then how in the heck can we get anything done? It's like you guys, meeting quarterly. I think you know what's going to happen. You have any concept of what is going on in the city? No. And I don't think that it's, uh, I don't think it's right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'd just like to make a comment about the idea of canceling meetings and rescheduling. I believe one meeting has been rescheduled since I've been attending. They get canceled, but they don't get rescheduled. And the reason that one was rescheduled was the commissioners made such a fuss that it got rescheduled. But I think it's really difficult to try to do a special meeting for people who have other lives, who only do this one committee, who are not on some uh, uh, committee like this, like you guys, that meet all the time and that have a lot of staff time. Uh, if somebody's on vacation and that special meeting gets called, we might not even have a quorum. Because, so I think that to say, oh, it's really easier to reschedule and cheaper, it's not. I don't think it is. And as I said, we don't reschedule. So it's not costing a lot of money. All you're doing is canceling, you're not rescheduling. It gets posted once. Thank you. If there's no one else for public input, we're gonna bring this back for, uh, oh. Hello, my name is Bill Graham. I attended a Parks and Rec meeting uh, sometime last summer or so, and we had a citizen's input about the restrooms down the uh, park, that the uh, ladies' room was always flooded with water, and kind of we were told that it was the, the people that use it. Um, I believe Ron was there. They said he would look into it. It was later found that there was a leak in the ladies' restroom um, and that it got fixed. This wouldn't have happened if that committee hadn't you know, met and wasn't there. And it was citizens' input into the Parks and Rec Committee that helped that fix. Otherwise, it would have just gone on as it's the way people use the restrooms. So there, there is purpose to this commission. Thank you. <clears throat> One last word. Stacy, you mentioned about special meetings being called. I'm kind of getting the impression that the staff is deciding on things or things that aren't out in the public are, are being decided and maybe these committees are just being called upon to rubber stamp them. I like what he just said about the restrooms. The more public input we can get, once again, I'm going to say, and the more volunteers we can get, let's use them to supplement the people that you can't afford to hire. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Any comments, questions from council? If not, I'm ready for a motion. Though, actually, I do have one comment. Um, I, the uh, suggestion to look into having meetings at alternate times resonates with me. Um, I know that, that, if, that it's very hard as a council member to be assigned to different committees and commissions because I work from eight to five and I, I really need to do, you know, I need to be there. So it's hard for me to take time off. And I know that, that I'm totally not alone. So um, the fact that people are calling specifically wanting to serve um, but would like us to look into additional times, which would require 
uh, an amended ordinance actually does speak. It's compelling to me. So if I know what I'm doing here, we're going to introduce an ordinance and have like a public hearing on it and discuss all of the things that we're discussing right now. And um, it, it pains me to hear that we have volunteers that want to come in and they want to do the work and then staff says, for whatever reason, um, well, we're not going to meet and maybe we need to consider, you know, and it sounds like we need to introduce the ordinance, obviously, and make the changes that need to be made, but maybe we need to minimize the amount of st staff time, maybe take the staff person off and leave a liaison on there and let them do their thing and bring all of their their ideas, have like a very populated agenda where they can check on this, how are we doing on revitalization, how are we doing on the, the path, how are we doing on Westside Community Park, and have a populated agenda. It sounds like they want to meet. Sounds like they want to do that. Sounds like the problem is staff may be too busy for whatever reasons and they can't make the meetings. Maybe we need to amend the ordinance to limit the amount of staff involvement and have the liaison and get out rid of the maybe Doug or whoever or have him come at quarterly meetings and he'll be here next month and we can ask him these questions. But Lord, we don't want to not get the input. We don't want to get the you know not get the help from people that are out there meeting and if they have ideas and then maybe the quarterly meeting, they could put together the quarterly report that they bring to us with Doug there. They can find out the de details and the nuances of it. And they can meet all they want with the liaison, and then Doug would come quarterly, something like that. I mean, some kind of a different model. But to me, to have people out there that want to work on the Parks and Recreation Committee, and they want to get input, and they want to be heard, and they want to share the information, and they want to fix things, it's crazy not to get that help. And maybe the ordinance needs to be changed in such a way that we can modify it so they can maybe set their own agenda with the liaison, run it by Doug, and then he shows up four times, if he's the guy, and meet with him four times a year to find out about the fine tuning and how it works with public works and all the details, and let them do their thing and let them flower and grow and come up with all these different items and meet as much as they want. I mean, four times, I mean, 12 times a year, and then four times with Doug there, something like that which would be a compromise, but man, we got people out there that want to work, let them work. I'm, I'm all about that. And um, if the staff time is a problem and they're canceling meetings because they're busy and the people want to meet, I, I think that's that's a crime. And I, I would like to see them meet anyway, and then maybe Doug could be there four times, or some modification of it. So we definitely need to take a hard look at this this ordinance. And I think the input was great, and it pains me to hear that you know maybe we're not hearing it. Um, because we're not supposed to be there, but we need to get reports from you. Maybe those would be a great thing for Doug to help put you together or the staff liaison to get the quarterly reports, and that would be wonderful. Because I think Nancy's right. I mean, we got people out there want to work. Let's let them work. Let's get them get the stuff in here. And there must be a way to make it more productive where they're not. You know, I don't want them, Parks and Rec, to feel like they've been working on something forever and not getting yeah, anywhere. That's ridiculous. That, that we've got to find a way to make it work better. So I guess the the thing would be to introduce the ordinance, and then we'll we can make these you know have this conversation, have some of the same people right. come up and tell us what they might think, and maybe staff could even say this is what a compromise sounds like based on what the the, the introduction meeting yeah. was about, and then we can make those changes because I think that would be great. I do have a question. Uh, One moment. Still, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. Suzanne, we close the public input. Session. I know, but you don't have a commission. So my question to you is, are you going to approve anybody, or are you just, we don't have a commission at this point? We don't have an item to approve applicants for that commission tonight. So it's not on the agenda, so I don't believe that we could do that. Well, one thing I was going to say is, is if they want to have a meeting every month, and they put it down, you know, whatever day it is and whatever time it is, Again, they can put it in their calendar and they know to schedule their time around it. When you try to get a special meeting, uh, I mean, we've seen some of ours where they, they, you know, I need to go here. Well, two of us can't, three of us can't. And, and it goes back and forth for three or four times before they find a date. So it's better to have 12 set meetings to me. And if Doug is too busy to go to all 12, like Kenny was saying, maybe... The thing is, is, he can go to four, and if it's a real important item, a liaison can go from the count of the parks and go to see Doug at his leisure instead of having him come out. And so I think there's there's a way to benefit all people here. And if this, uh, what we're trying to do today, is just set up a meeting to talk about this, 
then I'm all for talking about it, but I still think that 12 meetings a month, and they're willing to do this, I mean 12 meetings a year, and they're willing to do this, then we should do it that way, uh, personally. If I could just um, remind the council, similar to the ordinance that we passed related to the cannabis, um, commercial cannabis uses, if we're gonna make changes to the ordinance, substantive changes, then that's gonna require a second reading. Right. So um, if there are changes that, that you already anticipate you're gonna to wanna to make to the ordinance at the next public hearing, it's best to, to direct staff to what changes you're interested in so that when we come back, the next reading, we've already incorporated those changes. So we could effectively talk about changes right now. Like let's say that I say the meeting's gonna, they're gonna meet 12 times a year and Doug is gonna meet quarterly with them and we would like to see um, quarterly reports so that we can act on them in an efficient manner so that we know what's going on and we have this reciprocity going on. So we could say something like that, direct staff to something like that. Now, For example, if you have no problems with the change in the composition in terms of a non resident being on the that's only you can say that's fine we're okay with that but this but this I would <coughs> like to see this change well it, it was my understanding and, and correct me if I'm wrong it was not that he was a non-resident the resident still lived in the same zip code but that zip code extends past the city boundaries is that correct yeah it had to be the city of Lakeport address I it could be whatever the council wants yeah but the, the council could interview somebody based on their interest and qualification, which is pretty much how our other uh, committees, what they say when it's a non-resident. So, Lee, yeah, or you could look at it. The you planning commission it has, it has to be within zip code. the zip, zip code. code. Yeah, so there's. So it is a zip code. But yeah, but or that would be that. Actually, that's lead that's not more lead open. Okay. And, and this one is drafted so. just a non-resident to be appointed by the council on the basis of interest and qualification. Yeah, but and we don't what, have a definition of non-resident. Is a non-resident anybody that doesn't live in city limits? That's or yes. Okay. Well, and, and to further kind of like muddy the waters on that, um, a lot of people that use the parks and live in Lakeport and, and the, the area, of the sphere of influence, they don't even know that they don't live in the city of Lakeport. Mm -hmm. And that is a very good argument. Some of you, I've used the park, I'm all, you know, it's right out here, I'm only like, you know, 600 feet away, I'm not even in the city of Lakeport, I can't serve on the committee. So it, it says they may be on the commission. It doesn't mean that we have to have someone out. Right. I think it's still gonna come down to vetting the members, getting the interest. Oftentimes we can't get, you know, we need have five, you know, three openings and we get two people apply. So if someone's near the, the city limits of Lakeport, they use the park and they go down and, you know, run their dog or do whatever, come to all the events, then that's great. I mean, we this by the same token, this is exactly what we're talking about. People want to meet 12 times a year, let them meet. They want to be on the committee and they have the qualifications and they're like, you know, the small area outside of Lakeport and they want to be on the committee and we don't have a bunch of qualified people or the person doesn't really want to be, then put them on there. So it's, it's not, we shouldn't make it so restricted. We should make it more of a, a liberal approach to getting the people in that really want to do it. I think that's what it's all about. Um, Adam Mayor, if I could just add one thing. Um, I'm not sure where council member Perlet is going, but um, I do need to state that this is a Brown Act um, group. So even if you only had certain staff at certain meetings, there would probably have to be staff at every meeting because there would need to be somebody taking minutes and doing at least a secretary there taking minutes and-, and Well, that's where I said the liaison that, yeah. that said, staff and a staff liaison okay I just so those, those sure two people works. so i said the staff liaison for sure okay. be at the meeting but i did i wanted to free up doug because this guy's got 10 million projects he doesn't necessarily need to be at all the meetings the staff liaison was a given because i saw that in okay, it. so it. Okay. i wanted to make sure yeah I, I i already figured that person in on it and they would be the person that so i was already cool with that so what staff is assigned to these meetings? How does it work? Um, I'm the person, uh, and um, Cindy um, is a secretary that takes the um, action minutes. Um, I do try to invite Ron, if he's available, uh, to, uh, particularly if there's technical questions. Uh, 
Ron knows the intricacies of the park better than I do, actually. So, uh, so I do try to invite Ron if he's available, but um, but I am the person that attends. And do you do the noticing as well? Cindy does that. Okay. It all comes out of my department. Okay. We do the public works does everything for okay. parks and rec. Doug, Doug would set the agenda items with you know in conjunction with the what the committee has recommended with what he's heard direction from the council. Okay. So that would I mean that really couldn't be done by a liaison, I don't think. So so Doug the a lot of the committee members have spoken about meeting monthly. Um, as opposed to quarterly, do you have some um, input regarding quarterly, you know, the comparison and, and what you need to get the work done? Well, I, I love our park staff. We have some some very dedicated people in our, in our parks commission, and I've worked with them, all of them, for quite a very long period of time. Um, but I'm sorry I am not in full agreement with them that we need to meet every single month. Um, if quarterly it seems too far for them and, they, and I heard some vehement opposition to that uh, possibly every other month um, because in my most humble opinion unless council has the way the ordinance is written unless council has a very specific thing for the park and rec commission to look at or to take on that's, that's what their role is um, the Park and Rec Commission's, um, so you know, I'm not an expert on the ordinance. And well, so for example, guys, we have new uh, equipment that we have to look at coming up, right? Correct. So would that be something we, that would Parks be, and Rec would yes. take a look at for yes. us and then come back to us? Yes. Okay. And, and, and I can give you some examples of, of what we've done. I mean, they say that we don't have very many meetings, but we, I think that we do get a lot done in the meetings that we have. Uh, we've just finished um, acquiring the last piece of equipment we need to get the medallions put in. So that is a priority for us with walking trail to get that completed. I know that they've worked very hard on it. And, uh, you know, that those things don't go past me. I'm very cognizant of their efforts and their goals. Uh, but they've heard the... Um, moving of the uh, equestrian center out to um, the CLMSD property that went through Park and Recreations. Uh, the proposed uh, mountain bike trail uh, went through Park and Recreations. Um, our proposed new playground structure has been reviewed and gone through Park and Rec. Um, so those major type of projects we always make time and those things do come to council. Um, so I personally think that the amount of time that we've worked, we, they've been very functional. I'm just not so sure that we need to meet every single month. So would a compromise for you to, would be to meet every other month? For me personally, that would be much better. And then in between, is there any communication so that people know what's going on? What we could look at possibly is in that... Um, I think that we could come to some compromise for that every other month. Um, so there's I, an update in between kind of thing? Right. I'd have to talk to David. I, I mean, possibly. I'm not sure, you know, if another staff member could possibly attend that besides myself. I, well, mean, I don't I mean don't, a meeting. I mean, like, an email update. Can there be communication that way or no? Unfortunately, some of our commission members do not have email. Um, so that is not always a option for us to communicate. We do have one uh, commissioner that uh, that we called or sent um, regular mail. Okay. I guess if they did want to do that, I guess they could email and then mail to the one person that doesn't have the email. Right. In between. But it would have to be an update that didn't require actions or opinions well no just a, a serial meeting no i was just, just getting at the um suzanne lyons had pointed out that they just don't hear anything so right. i was just right. following up on that if they met less than once a month how would they stay up on what's going on that you know all communicate mm -hmm. trying to understand 
how to make it work for everybody. Suzanne, you're talking back there, so do you want to come up? Brown act. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it's Brown Act, so we can't talk. I didn't say talk. No. I said get an update through the email of right. what's going on. That's, so, that was your question of how are we supposed to know what's going on. Right, but you see, so what it means is we can get information from staff, but we can't talk to each other or give anything back because we're bound by the Brown Act. That's why we have to meet, because we can't meet together unless we have a noticed Brown Act meeting. That's right. what we're saying. I so, completely understand, yeah. but uh, Doug is saying that every other month would be enough to get the actions done. Well, it would be enough for us to get information from Doug, but it wouldn't get, if we've got a leaky toilet, it wouldn't let us decide, sit down and talk and go, you know, we've got a problem here and discuss it and feedback because we can't talk to each other. Okay. We, have had me we have had meetings without a liaison. We have, we've called meetings and it's worked out okay, but they still would have to be noticed meetings. And as far as our bylaws say, they don't say it has to be done. It says whoever the, uh, uh, the city manager designates to come, so it doesn't have to always be the same person. It could be somebody else. But there are things that we weren't updated on that I'm just hearing about now. I don't know what the bicycle path thing is. I, that's nothing that I ever heard of at a meeting. Yeah, so. they came to your meeting, Suzanne. Okay. Yes, they made a presentation to the Park and Rec Commission. And I'm you sorry. gave me direction to bring it to council. I brought it to council. And council gave us approval to proceed with the planning stage of that. And, and yes, that came from the Park and Rec. Well, I think that one of the other things that we're missing here, too, is that if you look at our bylaws, everybody leaves out the part that's C, which says, we take direction from you, but we are also supposed to look at things that we think might be something that would be good in a recreational um, area and bring it to you. And that is part of our bylaws, and that's where the walking path came from. It came from us, not from, not from staff down. It came from the commission up. So all we're talking about is we need a chance to get together and talk. And we also need a chance. People ask me all the time about stuff that's going on in the park. I hear all the time what's going on with the fencing, what's going on with the walkways, what's going on. And it's good for us to at least be able to say, hey, I know what's going on because I'm a member of the Park and Rec Department. I just talked to somebody today about it. So if, you, you know, it, if it's staff time, then maybe let us meet and let us have a notice meeting. We don't necessarily have to have staff, but we could be talking about things, and then we could send an email to staff. But we do, and we do have minutes, so there should be something coming to you guys. And I think we talked about this the last time we talked about having me uh, having reports to you, but that never happened. Doug, did you want to say something about dealing with the leaks? Uh, my, my comment to that is, is, is that I have an open door policy and my staff has an open door policy. And when that particular item came to the Park and Rec Commission, uh, I was a little disappointed that the individual that brought that to the Park and Rec Commission never brought that to my staff's attention. Because we are very, very reactive to anyone that comes and talks to us and has an issue. And so, you know, for those kinds of things, to be perfectly honest, that, that's not what the park and rec is about. You know, that should be coming to, to staff, and staff should be able to deal with that. And so, um, I appreciate very much all the park and rec, and rec does, but, but I think that we have to keep the perspective of what really is, you know, what, what is this all about? And I think that maybe this is an opportunity with this ordinance change that we're looking at is to really look at that. What do Park and Rec, what really is their purpose? Maybe we can define some of these things as we do this rewrite. That's just my opinion. So everyone feels good about it then? I certainly <laughs> hope that someone that found a leak in our bathroom wouldn't wait for a Park and Rec meeting to come to City Hall and let us know that's going on. Well, I don't know if it was the same person, but I know after, um, during Shakespeare in the Park, someone approached me and said, hey, this, the bathroom, is, there's a leak there. It, it's difficult. ADA access is, is compromised because of it. 
I spoke to Margaret the same day. It was fixed within a few days. So it may be that that corresponded to just the park and rec meeting, but there are, there are it, it's definitely effective to speak to someone directly um, it, within the city staff. Yeah. I found it very helpful, the quick response that, that you had. And she, this person reported back to me shortly thereafter that it was fixed. Yeah, that must have happened the same exact time. I, I think so. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. They reported yeah. to me, and I reported to Doug, and, and I was told that it was immediately taken care of. At least that one circumstance. I'm sure right. we're talking about the same one. So we have ways to thankfully get things done uh, in, in a quicker manner than waiting for, for meetings. So the, the way um, it seems to me that if Doug is sitting, you know, setting the agenda, you know, it says that they can, that they vote for the, the chairman and the vice chairman. And um, it sounds to me that if Doug were out of the loop as far as being the chairman, because then if he's the chairman and then he decides what's going to be on the agenda, then he could say, well, I don't think there's enough on agenda, I'm going to cancel the meeting. But if everybody's got all these ideas and all this uh, stuff that they want to, to do, then it seems to me that maybe someone else on the committee would be the chairman with this roll-down menu of all these continual updates on the agenda, you know, how are we doing on this, how are we doing on that, how are we doing on this, and then you have the secretary, which is Cindy, they're taking minutes at uh, at least every other meeting, and maybe only, you know, she'll be there at every meeting, and Doug would, could be there quarterly. He would not have to set the agenda. It wouldn't impact staff time with him. He would get the agendas from the committee meeting. They could have regular meetings without Brown Act violations. They could discuss things, and they would have this roll-down list that they made, not coming from Doug, and then Doug could look at it and say, well, I don't need to be there. Cindy, take care of it, or Ron, take care of it. And maybe if they took more of an ownership thing, left the staff out with Cindy there to take the minutes and keep everything legal, maybe that would be a better way to do it. And then, no, Doug? Uh, the commission does have a chairperson. Um, at this point in time, it's uh, Cindy uh, Easter. Oh, okay. And so, um, and they do, um, through their chair, uh, request agenda items and work on their agenda it comes to me and then I make sure that it gets posted uh, but they do have a chair and they do follow that protocol so um, so it's, it's not like I'm some kind no of but I mean so that's already like set up so with they, them having a chair yes that, right and, and they, could, they could set the agenda so that there's plenty of stuff for them to do and then they Cindy would go there, and if you're not ne needed, then you could just pick and choose your battles and go in there when it's, when there's some kind of technical knowledge needed by you or Ron, and they could have their meetings 12 times a year, and you could be there at, at will, so to speak, as long as we meet the other that's requirements. That's not really how the committee is set up right now. I understand that, but that's what we're discussing. So if that's a problem, I just want to know. Can I, I uh, make a suggestion that maybe we do this? They have six meetings go to every other month and see how that works for a year and see if if that's really not fulfilling all their needs of, of the discussion needs to be done. Well, the only thing I have with that is what George said. You know, city council meeting, first and third Tuesday. Okay, um, I think that something happened like this with the Lions Club years ago. They used to meet every week on Tuesday night. And then it was like, okay, well, you know, we don't have enough people that want to come every week, so we're going to go every other week. Well, is it this week or was it was it next week? And then next thing you know, their membership went to nothing. Now the 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 I late the, scheduled meetings. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying is, is it is it this month or is it next month? If it's every month, they know it's every month on the third Wednesday or whatever. So I, I'm just saying that it's it's not as easy to say every other month and then everybody gets it. Um, well, it would I, be a set calendar. Yeah. I mean, it's a happy compromise. It's a compromise. Well, it's a compromise, but the committee members don't seem to be happy with that. But, it's a compromise that right, we want to make, but if they want to meet, I, I just... I, it it's a lot different than quarterly, and it would be six meetings, and that's what they did in the last year. And you could and add, happy you about still it. add in a special right. meeting. But if you had six scheduled meetings that were planned ahead, they would be well agenda you know, they would be planned out well and um, have a set action plan, maybe that would be more productive because the, it, 
I mean, it seems in, that there's some inherent problems here. You know, both the committee and um, Doug, they don't seem to be working together great right now. So my question, was, could we ask the people on the committee for, for six meetings a month be a compromise? Or I, I still think we should do it monthly, but I, I'd kind of like to hear what they would say about six meetings a month. Well, I, I six they, meetings a year. Well, they just told you they want 12 meetings, right. and Doug's saying he wants four. Right. So at some point, we need to go, okay, what is the best thing to make this work and make everybody happy and try it for a year and see if it you know gets better and we could look at the ordinance you know with that and we could add in you know a member in 95453 and look at some of these other changes as well um well i thought i brought up the fact that we have 12 meetings for the people that want to be there and doug comes at will cindy has to be there and that's I mean, to me, that's the compromise. They want to meet 12 times a year. They can meet 12 times a year. Doug can come at will when he sees something that he needs to be there and he doesn't need to be bothered and they can make up their agenda. And I think that things, there may be more things happening, especially after all this public comment and, and you know, council member input. Things may, may get a lot better. And when Doug needs to pipe in, he can. If Ron needs to be there, fine. Uh, Cindy has to be there, right? And so that's just the way I feel about it. It seems that... I don't want these people not meeting. They may become very productive suddenly um, when they have the opportunity. And to say, no, you're only going to meet every other month, I, I just, it just rubs me the wrong way. And Doug doesn't have to be there. I, I mean, believe staff does need to be at the meetings. I, but so Cindy's well, not staff then? Is, yeah. is there another staff member we could, we, could, we could give this responsibility to besides Doug? Because with Doug's plate overflowing the way it is, um, I, I understand you wanting to bring it down to a quarterly level. I get that, but is there somebody else who could fill that fill that spot for you? Well, there's not gonna be anybody with authority to be there. I mean, we can have a, a parks person maybe be there, but they wouldn't have the authority like Doug does just when they're discussing these issues, so. Um, and, and I mean, what what kind of decisions and authority are we talking about needing, <laughs> needing to happen in this meeting? <laughs> That's what I'm getting. Doesn't it all come back to city council? Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I guess I mean, my, they're, they're, my, to answer your question, Tim, my only concern about that, and, and I just want to express, I will do whatever council asks me to do. I'm, I'm here at your pleasure, and so, you know, you just asked my opinion, but, but I am and gladly and willingly going to participate however you want to see this operate. But the problem with just having a, a staff person go, most of them aren't cognizant of all the ADA requirements and all the laws and rules and regulations that apply to our park systems and just general city in general. So a lot of times, and Suzanne made the comment, uh, Russell made the comment herself, she couldn't believe how hard it was to get a bench put in. And then, you know, she would just go out and put the bench in. Well, that's what I'm there for is I say, no, I'm really sorry. I think the bench is a great idea, but it has to meet certain criteria. And so that is what my main job is, is to make sure that, that they understand all the rules and regulations and laws. And if I don't know it, then I'm the one that calls David and says, hey, this just came up in Park and Rec. I don't know the legality of this. Would you please look into this and tell us what we have to do to be legal? That's the, the role that I play. That would be the hard part for, and I would not feel comfortable make, putting my staff in the position of having to make those decisions. Well, and so... Could, could you do that after reading the minutes of their meeting? You know, if you were supplied with a copy of the minutes from their meeting and they go, hey, we want to put in a park bench. Let's vote to put in a park bench. And they pass that they're going to put in a park bench and you look over the minutes and shoot them back and go, yeah, no, you can't put in your park bench. Well, the, the, but that's not how, how it works. How, how it works is, is that if they, would, they would decide that they would feel that there was a need to put a park bench at place X. We would look at what it would take to do that, go over all the legal engineering, all of that stuff, and then if they still felt strongly that that's what they want to do, then they would tell me, Doug, we would like to put a park bench in here. 
would you please take this to council? And so that's why I bring to you like the walking trail, the horse thing, the bike thing. I'm their liaison to bring their wishes to the council and, and to be able to inform the council, yes, we've looked at all of these things. It's, you know, this is the pros, this is the cons. And what then is the council's pleasure for us to proceed with either, yes, we think that's a great idea, we, we want staff to proceed with that, or, you know what, that sounds really good, but, but council is not real comfortable with that, and no, we, we don't want you, we're saying no, which I'm, doesn't I'm, happen very often. I, I think the place that I'm getting caught up in this is, is a lot of this stuff you're going to have to, you're not going to be able to make the decision on the spot about because it's going to take some research. Um, is there a reason that research, you know, that research still has to happen and if it just came to you in the form of, of their minutes and what, what their does it, maybe it's not even so much as we, we, we're going to put this bench in as much as um, the Park and Rents Commission would like Doug to look at the feasibility of putting a bench in at Location X. And then a report was prepared for the next meeting. You know, that way it, it's not tying up all your time and needing to be there, but they're still being able to, to get their meetings in and make the headway that they're hoping to make on, on behalf of, you know. If council feels from the, from the uh, public input that the meetings need to be every month, we will make sure staff is there and make sure the meetings go every month. I mean, uh, I totally understand your position and, and the members of the public. So uh, I'll make sure staff is there, whatever we need for the meetings that you need. Well, I, I don't certain. know if you, the, the whole thing is, I think Tim and I are both totally in agreement. I don't want necessarily Doug there unless he needs to be there. And I don't even know if the committee wants Doug there. I think that, that, <laughs> that, that, that the whole Doug idea is, is if, if Doug is needed, and, and I think Tim made a great scenario there. They, they put together an idea, and, and I'm hoping they're going to have this very populated agenda, and they're going to go through all this stuff, and the, the council or the, the staff representative is going to be taking copious notes, and it's all going to be taken care of, and then they're going to have a proposal, and they're going to say, what do you think about doing this? And everybody says, I think this is a great idea. I think we should send it to, to Doug, and then he can put staff to work on it. We don't want Doug there. Honestly, going I think that's more work than just having Doug there. Yeah. Really? Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, but I'm saying these are going to come up every it's day. It's all right. We'll make it work. No, but I'm saying that, that oh, this isn't going to be something that's going to happen every week. You know, I mean, what you're saying is that you need to have a resident expert there all the time. Okay, well, then maybe the four times a year is where the city's going. I just hate to eliminate resources out there, and I don't know that they're going to be banging on Doug that much to get different things done, but maybe they could put them all in one pile and say, okay, this is what we got. But I, I, I don't want Doug to be burdened with, you know, monthly meetings. I, all of us up here have way too many meetings, and a lot of them are productive, and a lot of them are a monumental waste of time. So I understand what's going on. But at the same time, I don't want the people out here that want to meet to miss meeting, and I don't want to burden you at the same time, so I'm trying to get a Well, it's important for my staff to be there. Yeah. And I so if they're going to meet monthly, my staff will be there. If you decide to do it every other month, You're my staff will be terrible. there. So I, it's really important as, as the city manager. I'm not working with my compromise. My <laughs> That's why you go for the compromise. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I don't think it would lessen the sense of frustration if the, the committee takes this time to meet to discuss these ideas, then they send it through minutes to staff who then goes, well, that's an interesting concept. Let me give you 15 reasons that we need to think about this in this way. Then if I were sitting, if I had gone through that meeting, I'd be like, well, no. you know, if he'd just been sitting there, we could have done, had it done in like five minutes, you know? So I, I understand the value and the importance of having the staff with the know-how available for questions in real time uh, rather than later. Man, so, man. yes. Just, just to point out, the, the draft as written um, gives the city manager the discretion to appoint a staff member. So it's, it's the city manager's call. This is a, essentially a management decision. Um, so, you know, that's... Yes, but you're just not, to you're take not it requiring her to yeah. make Doug go or not make Doug go. It's up to the city manager. 
Exactly. Thank you. And mm -hmm. and so the 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 either side that are being weighed then is staff time versus need for staff resources to be assigned. So <coughs> that's where I feel like our compromise is still kind of in wavering right in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where are we? With our so, so. Um, we've, we've we have concluded the closed? public input. Unless you had something that we haven't considered yet, we're going to go ahead and start moving towards this. Kind evening. of. Um, I think Doug pretty much, uh, if I may address you, uh, I think Doug pretty much, uh, his what he had to say pretty much solidifies the reason why we need Doug there. Um, just like in any of the other commissions, the planning commission, we have Kevin. We have direction, and we get information from Kevin. And just like the other commissions, Doug is it. He's very important to us. We want him there. And um, he's, he does handle the problems. I mean, we talk about lots of things. And then he tells us why we can't do that. Um, <laughs> Was there anything else that you wanted to? Oh, yeah, just that I think monthly and we need Doug. Thank you. Period. Suzanne, could you live with every other month no. with the ability to have a special meeting? I don't think we can get anything done. We barely can get it done monthly. And um, so, no, I'm not. But you haven't But met. you met six times in the last 16 months. If, if we were we at this point. did not cancel the meetings. Right, the right, I understand that. You would I actually have that. more meetings, is what he's saying, yeah, if you did every meetings. other month. Committed to You would have had eight <laughs> instead of six. Well, if the staff doesn't c cancel meetings, then we would have our meetings. And we might be able to remember what we're working on. So to, in order to make it easier for staff to be prepared and not cancel the meetings, if you went to every other month? I know what you're aiming at. I understand that. I'm trying I'm to go it. for a happy However, medium, something that works for Doug and works for you guys. Well, um, I, I think that it would be a lot less work if Doug came to the meeting for an hour than trying to... No, Doug would come to the meeting, okay. but he proposed Four quarterly. Year. You guys want... Every month. So how about every other month? No. <laughs> I called the rest of the commission. Very odd. Very odd that, that we that no one wants to compromise. Well, I called the rest of the commissioners. None of them have an objection to monthly. None of them. So uh, I don't see Right, but at, at the same time staff. they're saying the meetings aren't really working. So <laughs> If the meetings aren't really working well, who's, who's Doug, that? you guys have all come up and said had different issues with how the meetings are going. I think no, this is kind of circular. They have no no, no, the only issue we have is that there aren't any meetings. Okay. Got it. Six out of 16 months. Okay. Excuse me, but thank you, Suzanne. Okay. Done. Well, what's better? <laughs> well, every other month with Doug. Every month without that. <laughs> yes. Well, that's ultimately not our call. That's that's I know yeah. that's Margaret's call. Uh, well, it's the thing the thing that um, that it says in the staff report is staff received feedback from interested applicants. The number of meetings was creating a bigger commitment than these volunteers were willing to make. And obviously, that part is a little bit shaky based on the fact that you know, they had a straw poll and they said that everybody was more than willing to be there. Um, I just want to go on record that I was trying to make it easier on Doug and trying to get a compromise and I wanted to make it where the committee took personal ownership and did most of all their stuff together and minimally impacted Doug who is the big guy that, that I guess they need to have there but my goal was to try and minimize that as much as possible but I am on the side of meeting every month because if they want to give the resources I want to take them and I want to get help and I hope that they prove me right by doing some amazing things next year but I, I can't go anything less than 12 times a year. But you got more votes than I have. <laughs> well, I would always compromise. I would go, with, you know, try to make them both happy. Well, you're not going to make them happy. <laughs> so <laughs> they 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 well, I think if they were, you know, I think the compromise, they would get more done, too. It would be more effective. But 
And it, they're saying no. <laughs> So the question is, is that we need to figure out what the substantive changes are. Yeah. And if there's votes here to outvote me, that's fine. But if there's any substantive changes, we need to make them now so that we only have to have one more hearing, right? Yeah. If you want to, if you want to reduce the possibility that there's going to be issues, yeah. issues. reduce but the possibility. The there could still be more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the other option is to take a motion to introduce this first reading. Um, and come back and if, you know, take a vote and up, up or down, and if it fails, it fails. And oh, you mean without any changes? <coughs> I mean, I, I'm not hearing a consensus of direction to staff at this point right. regarding any changes. So maybe that I thought this was a simple thing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> nope. Okay, so I just have one last comment then before we, we move to motion. Um, it is very weighty, the will of the commission members wanting to have these regularly scheduled meetings so that they can get things done. I appreciate the respect that they have for the Brown Act and they're trying to operate within the regulations and state laws and things like that. On the other hand, the, the people who have called and voiced interest but want to have meetings less often, nah, that, that's, that's interesting input, um, but they're not here. However, what, who is here is staff, who is also voicing that this is, this, this is a burden that is becoming troublesome. <coughs> and so because of those two, uh, um, I, I'm good with every other month for now. We can change it if we need to, um, I'd like to see the meetings held more consistently and less cancellations because that way the commissioners can finally, the, I, I don't know that, that, that everyone has been given the opportunity to have regular meetings anyway. So I can understand the frustration of not feeling like you can get anything done if it's been six meetings in 16 months. And that's not like every other month. It's like, I don't even know when those six happened. You know, so yeah. that's an irregularity, irregularity that I think hurts productivity. Yeah. So I would like, I'm in favor of going every other month with the understanding that, uh, that we better have really good reasons to not hold these meetings. Well, and they can call a special meeting if they have exactly. stuff that they're working on and know that it can't wait mm -hmm. for two months, then they can call a special meeting the following month. Which is great for special occasions. Add those in for, you know, whatever work they feel like can't wait or new ideas and, and keep going. Mm -hmm. But having that set schedule might make everybody more productive. That would be my hope. So you could move to introduce the first reading with the amendment that the uh, meetings be held every other month regularly. And then that would, what we would come back with in the second reading for next month, if, if, the, if you get a majority of your right. peers to. So you have to vote on a majority to make that substantive change today. Yes. Correct. And would it, how does everyone feel about a citizen at large? Does it need to be a resident of Greater Lakeport, or just could it be anybody? If they're a 95453, if they're interested and they want to work, I'm good. That's why. 95453? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys the same? There's a lot so of people that would add that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So far we don't get enough numbers. Good. So, so we can either establish consensus or someone can offer a motion. Where would we like to go from here? Well, I'd like to make consensus with the 95453. I think, I think that's been established. We've already done that. that. Yeah. So, congratulations. No, no more. You didn't need done that one. There you go. <laughs> but just a comment about the LEDAC used to meet every month, and it was becoming hard too because I had a couple of department heads, well, department head and myself in there too. So we went to every other month, and um, our president's in the audience of LEDAC, and I think we accomplished a lot, probably even more than we did when we were doing. We focused, we got things done on the bi-monthly basis and it, you know, we got a lot of projects done, especially this past year. So just to 
to give a little tidbit on one of I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm sorry, were you saying that the, the, the meetings went every other month, yes. or you guys just went every other month? <laughs> <laughs> the meetings went to every other month, and, and then they got, we got things done like the strategic plan for our economic development. Uh, we got a working group on business visits. We've got, I mean, we just got to make it really productive when we're there every other month uh, and to get things done. So I really appreciate the fact that we have volunteers that want to meet every month. I mean, I, I really do appreciate that very much. So I'll make a motion to introduce an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Lakeport amending Chapter 2.20 of Title II of the Lakeport Municipal Code, including every other month meetings and an at-large member in 95453. For the Park and Rec Commission and set a public hearing for February 20th, 2018. Do we have a second? How long do I wait before the motion <laughs> fails for lack So of you sense? guys want monthly meetings? Is that what you're all saying? Yes. Okay, that motion has died. All right. Does anyone have a second motion? Doug having to sit at every meeting. Yeah, I think the idea of him getting reports and being at the next meeting kind of thing would be could, could this I could could it work with Doug being being at every other meeting and receiving reports from the meetings he's I not at? I would recommend it. So um, I'll make a motion to introduce an ordinance of City Council of the City of Lakeport amending Chapter 2.20 of Title II of the Lakeport Municipal Code regarding Parks and Recreation Committee and set a public hearing for February 20th with the changes that we would meet monthly instead of quarterly. Well, it is monthly now, so we don't need to change the ordinance. Well, the ordinance. No, this is draft says quarterly. The draft, the draft, the draft says quarterly. I bet the ordinance doesn't say. <coughs> The ordinance is not clear. The ordinance says as needed. As yeah. needed, yeah. It says as needed. So now we're but, saying monthly. Well, but what I'm saying is, do we need to bring this back at all if we're not going to change the ordinance? The There's all the strike throughs and everything else. There are other changes. Yeah, There's, There's other, other changes. The the other change would be, you know, adding the at-large member. So that's one. <laughs> um, a slight change in the language on the terms expiring December 31st. Um, it says January, but December 31st is the language we use for all of our others, so I just that okay. was just a little clean up. Um, the yeah, the ex officio we took out, which um, Stacey had mentioned. Uh, the council has not been doing for a number of years. Okay, so we just would be making those changes. Right, there's just some small, there's small changes that are kind of clean up to make them more consistent with the way our other ordinances or ordinance sections read for other committees. Right. Mm -hmm. so because it says the Park and Recreation Committee shall hold at least one quarterly meeting for the transaction of business. Yeah. And I'm saying that they're going to meet monthly, and in here says except no agenda items have been proposed, and the quarterly regular meeting would be canceled. So I'm saying that there would be 12 regularly scheduled meetings for the transaction of business. And I guess I could say except that no agenda items have been proposed, and the quarterly scheduled meeting may be canceled. Is that how it reads? Yeah. Any other parts already in the, uh, does that need to be changed? So we're changing shall set meetings when necessary to now read a monthly meeting. Right. So I guess that, that, that was the only, just to clarify, that was the only amendment you didn't Right, everything else stays as it is, yeah. 
regarding the um, that was non Lakeport resident. That was still in there. I think nine point four five three. Oh, it, it, that it could be as other. <coughs> city zip code. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Can we get a, a roll call? Vote? I'm sorry. It was short. Sure. Second. Uh, Tim. That was Tim. And Councilmember Barnes. Did you want to roll call? Yes, please. Uh, Councilmember Barnes. Aye. Councilmember Matina. Aye. Mayor Turner. No. Councilmember Parlett. Aye. Councilmember Spur. Aye. Thank you. All right. Next item on our agenda is from Community Development. Authorized city staff to prepare and solicit a request for proposals RFP for the City Hall remodel project. Kevin? Yes, good evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members. I'm going to try and keep my voice going for you. It's been going in and out on me today, so I apologize. <clears throat> a stated goal of your council and, and several departments has been review and uh, consideration of improvement to permit issuance and customer service improvements uh, throughout the city. Um, in early on in this process of reviewing potential improvements, um, it became clear to staff that the, um, the physical layout of City Hall uh, creates some impediments to service, uh, particularly the location of my department, uh, community development department, uh, being located sort of in the back of this hall. A uh, number of times we get public who come in who feel uncomfortable going down that hall, they, they think that maybe that's just, you know, staff only, and so that, that does create some confusion as to where, um, you know, where, where, to, where to go to get your business license or where to go to uh, talk to a planner or to, um, to um, a building official. Um, also, another problem is uh, currently the utility, uh, the utility staff is uh, only able to, to serve one customer at a time in, in their limited space that they have. Uh, the current fiscal year budget um, includes setting aside uh, $70,000 for the remodel of City Hall uh, to assist in, in kind of achieving you know, the implementation of, of some of these improvements. Um, staff has been reviewing options to assist in this objective. Um, I'd like to specifically thank uh, Tom Carlton, our building official, who's been very helpful at you know, keeping us on track on what is possible and, and what is not possible as far as the building goes. He's spent uh, quite a bit of time on helping to put this together. Um, the primary objectives uh, for, for this, uh, this remodel would be to um, kind of relocate and kind of cluster all the um, customer service and permit service um, services together in one location uh, right near the, the lobby area. So kind of making that back wall that sits currently right behind where um, where Panette sits with LMSA as um, open windows to the, to the counter so that you would have your utility windows and your, um, your community development windows together in that one location. That's the primary purpose. There are some other sort of ancillary items that um, will be achieved through this. Uh, one is uh, you know, adding a, a storage area for the council chambers here so we would no longer have to stack the tables and chairs right in the back of the meeting room and also move the doors up so as to separate the conference room um, from the council chambers itself to kind of help maximize the efficiency of using those spaces because right now sometimes if you have a meeting going on in here during the day and you have another meeting going on in that conference room they, you know, the, the two don't always mix together and they, they end up interrupting each other not on purpose but by accident so those are the primary objectives of the of there, but um, also yeah. in reviewing. I'd like to add one other major primary is the finance window. They can only serve us one person at a time. When the counter is really busy, they're, they're lined up in here. Uh, with an open counter, that's really one of the really important uh, aspects too, is to make sure that we could service more people the first of the month or, you know, let's get close to shut off dates. We have a lot of people in here. And, and we'll just, would uh, also make a very uh, flow much better if people would wait in line so long uh, for the finance department. An another you know, concern is right now all of our counter spaces are, um, are not ADA compliant, so doing this would also allow us um, room to create an ADA compliant counter as well. So that's, that's another primary objective of this. But also when we began reviewing this, we began to, to quickly realize that there are some other 
items in the um, city's uh, capital improvement project that um, may be economical to also consider um, as we move forward with this project. Principally, those are um, upgrades to the security and, and building alarm for City Hall. Another one would be uh, providing a fur wall or just an insulated wall along this Bath Northern wall, which is just a concrete wall um, to help assist in creating better energy efficiency throughout the entire building. And also potentially looking at um, getting the exterior of the building recoded to um, stop water seepage through the concrete. If you we pulled like that, that wall right here. This yeah. wall on this side um, gets a lot of efflorescence that you know kind of pushes through. And you, you can kind of see on the floor where the water is seeping through the concrete and um, and pushing the paint. Most of it's kind of behind that screen. Mm -hmm. That's why we took the screen down. The bubbles, I know. Yeah, <clears throat> more scratch. And and Tom Tom Carlton will quickly point out that he's pretty sure that if we pull the paneling off of that wall, mm -hmm. that we'd have the same the same problem on that side as well. Um, so those are just sort of things. Uh, so the primary purpose of this evening, uh, we've, we've provided you with sort of a, a quick preliminary view of what that uh, window space would look like up front. That's one of the attachments in your report. Also, there's um, uh, Tom highlighted sort of a demolition plan showing what areas would, um, would you know, walls being removed and extra spaces created within City Hall and then kind of having a preliminary layout of what the end result floor plan would be. But the primary purpose of this discussion is to, to gather any um, additional suggestions or, um, or objectives from both the council and the public, and then seeking direction to uh, put together, for staff to put together a request for proposals and solicit that proposals to see um, you know, the cost of getting those completed. Thank you. Does council have any questions? Uh, seems how you want to move the door up right there probably. Is that window going to go away? It's not part of the plan. <laughs> do, do you want the window to go away? Well, I, don't, I don't even know what the purpose of it is. So like, I'm not it's sure. Sort of, it's it was, sort of like, yeah. you know, are they got a camera back there? No, I, I think it was that way when Pat Bell had the building, you know, so that didn't get remodeled probably. I don't know, Tom might know better than me. But I'm not sure why it's there. Somebody decided it should be there when we built that yeah. conference room, but that's been recent. The one, the, the one thing that, that I'd like to do is tell a little quick story about uh, Unified Grocers uh, got together and they got a bunch of experts in the boardroom and they all decided that uh, the trucks that were running up and down the highway hauling freight all over the state were using too much gasoline and they all got together and they got these all these different proposals and these guys came up with all these different trucks and tractors and they finally decided to buy these economical tractors and they were careful to only keep the conversation between themselves and they never brought in a real truck driver and what happened was they got these new trucks and they loaded them full of groceries and they pulled them up the Williams grade and it wouldn't pull the hill uh, because they never got the people that were on the ground involved in the decision-making process. The moral of the story is, I think it's wonderful we're doing this, and I think this is a great move forward, but I want to make sure that the staff people that are working in the office space, the people that are working the windows, that they are intimately involved in the ergonomics and the design because they're the ones that are going to be stuck in those offices trying to work and some kind of architect and design people they mostly think of all this stuff so don't get me wrong that isn't going to be great but I want to make sure there's an opportunity for people to have their creative input before the final designs are done and how it's going to look and how they feel about it because those gals been jammed in that little room they're dealing with that and they do a great job and everyone else is doing a great job, but it's really important that the, the, the RFP people, when they get this awarded, that they integrate ideas and concepts and at least listen to those people that are working in there because I think it's important. Those people are going to be spending a lot of time in there, and they're the ones that are going to have to deal with the layout. So I want to make sure everybody's happy. So that's my little story. That's great, and we have been including all the staff. I, I'm sure you would. Yes. No, but I agree. Thank you. Questions? Any member of the public here to address this? <coughs> Come on up, Nancy. I didn't know that was Nancy. I don't think 
Nancy Rizika. This is a great meeting tonight. There's several things I'm interested in. I'm a constant customer of City Hall, always down here bugging someone about something, it seems. And my pet peeve is that often when someone comes to town with money to spend here, they're on their way to the coast or someplace else, and gee, they can write it off on their income tax that they visited the City of Lakeport, and they come here and we're not open on certain Fridays. I, I've looked at this plan um, in your agenda packet, and I would think, suggest that you incorporate a window, maybe at the break room, available on Fridays, so you could again have a volunteer, someone to meet the public on days you're not open, and answer some of their questions about the city, or make them feel like they had an opportunity to talk to a face as they were coming through town. So they don't move on through town and uh, open their business in Ukiah or Fort Bragg. And um, uh, let's see, something else on this. And that people who come in with a project don't have to stand at the counter that they can ask, is there a place we can meet? And I noticed that you have a council chamber in the back. And I've been in here with Kevin Hess. I've seen him take people to the back. So it should be um, user-friendly, but some people don't want the whole world to know what they have in mind. Um, you know, kind of comp some kind of opportunity for some confidential review rather than standing at the counter. Thank you. Thank you. There's no further public input. We'll bring it back for consideration and a motion. Madam Mayor, I move to authorize city staff to prepare and solicit a request for proposals uh, for city hall remodel project. Next item is to adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Lakeport authorizing conducting criminal background checks for commercial cannabis licensing purposes. Chief? Yes, Mayor and Council, what you have before you is a request um, to adopt a resolution which will allow um, the police department to receive authority from the Department of Justice Federal Bureau of Investigation to receive uh, summary criminal history information when we're doing background checks on marijuana applicants. We currently do have a live scan account where we can access um, California and multi-state and federal criminal history um, for the purposes of employee backgrounds and other types of licensing. But as it sits right now, we, are, we have no authorization to receive that information on a canvas license check. So. Um, what's needed is this resolution adopted by the governing body that I can submit to the California Department of Justice who will then submit it to the FBI for approval so that I can get my, um, my live scan code to receive this information. That's uh, essentially it, unless the council has any questions. Thank you. Is anybody else struck with irony that we're sending an application to a federal agency to get information for something they consider to be illegal. It did come to okay. mind. All right, we'll just go past that. Sorry. Yeah. Public input. Anyone interested in input? We'll bring it back to council for consideration in a moment. Well, if there's no more, oh, I move to adopt the resolution of the city council to of the city of Lakeport authorizing conducting criminal background checks for commercial cannabis licensing proposals. Purposes. purposes. Proposals and purposes. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll move to City Council Communications. <coughs> Margaret? No uh, report. Doug. Then beautiful weather. <laughs> Nothing to report. Kelly. Chief. Yes, I know you're all aware that the uh, new vehicles are here, but uh, you may not be aware that um, when I got the bill, it was five thousand dollars cheaper than what you authorized. So, no. I thought that was a good thing. Awesome. I told you to get the V8s. 
Kevin? Nothing to report. Council Member Spur? Nothing to report. Council Member Parley? Well, I already reported to the city manager and to the attorney, to the city attorney that I was on a, uh, a trip recently to the city of Greenfield to uh, do a fact-finding study of one of the biggest, if not the biggest, $80 million marijuana cannabis processing plant with a number of uh, local <coughs> dignitaries to actually find out, you know, what the, the ultimate situation looks like. So I was over there on... Monday um, left out of Lamson and went down below Monterey and uh, was there for three and a half, four hours going through this unbelievable plan. And they've yet to make a dime so far. But the city of Greenfield, the city manager was there, said he was willing to come up and do a presentation for the board of supervisors. Our uh, cannabis ordinance was brought up a number of times, said it was great and loved it, but the county could get it together. And they said they would be happy to come up and do a promotion up there. But um, I understand that the city is garnering something like $12 million in taxes from that one facility and has already put to work 200 different people there in that one little town of about 15,000 people. So I thought that was very noteworthy. So anyway, that was my trip on Monday, yesterday. And I'll have to report that on my Form 700 so on, in spades. Thank you, Councilmember. Nothing to report. Tim? Nothing to report. <coughs> I also have nothing further to report. So we yes, Hillary? Oh, Hillary. Sorry. Oh, to report. You sure? <laughs> Close call. Okay. okay. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and adjourn. Thanks for coming.